Tarzan of the Apes, from the novels by Edgar Rice Burroughs, with Mr. James H. Pierce as Tarzan and Miss Joanne Burroughs as Jane Porter. This is an American gold seal production. Jane Porter has been rescued from a crocodile by Tarzan. Hearing native drums, Jane persuades Tarzan to take her toward the cannibal corral, where she knows her father and his party are. Perched high in the trees, they see the professor and the whites making their way toward the temple cave behind the waterfall. The professor's party has been told that Tarzan and Jane are in the cave, but they sense a trap. Now, are you ready? Hold your breath. Everybody, all right? I am. I'm with you. Still hanging on to this witch, Doctor. I'm trying to light a torch. I can't see a thing. Not what? Jack! There are only five of you. Oh, mon Dieu, there are only five. Oh, is it down the world? What's the matter? Five of my men did not get in with us. They are on the other side of the waterfall. Ah, and just listen to those meetings. I finished as though they were friendly. And now... And now, now start the moment, monsieur. The lives of my men are probably already forfeit. Give me a hand here with this witch doctor. Yes, sir, mon monsieur. I'll help you tie him so that we shall know where he is the next time we need him. All right, you tricker thief. I'd like to wring your filthy neck. Monsieur, your attention. I... I very much dislike what I have to say, and perhaps this may not be the time, or perhaps not the place to say any yes, Brownlow. Well, I think you will agree that Mademoiselle Potter is not here. No, quite certainly. Uh, we have a new thing that she is with Tarzan of the Ape. I mean, you will recall that I said from the beginning that this was a trap laid by the witch doctor. Yes, you are undoubtedly correct in your deductions, Now, the point I wish to stress is this. If Monsieur Cregon had not fired upon the upon Tarzan, we should not have had to come to this. Go ahead, say it. If I hadn't fired at him, you wouldn't have had to stop me, and the blacks wouldn't have attacked him. That's what you wanted to say, isn't it, Dono? Yes, Monsieur. And because of that, Monsieur Cregon, I have lost five of my sailors. You really think, down no. Monsieur? The ones who were not killed before we came in here are undoubtedly dead now, or worse still, on their way to the stake over the bomb. I, I didn't think... Precisely, Monsieur Python, you did not think. You allowed your personal feelings against this Tarzan, who never so far as I know has done you any harm. <laughs> harm? Harm? He's kidnapped Jane, you hear? Kept him in the jungle for weeks. Uh, now, now, Clayton, Clayton, we have James Note here telling us that he has come to no harm. Ha <laughs> ha, James Note! James Note! Dictated by Carlin, no doubt. Nonsense, Clayton. You're talking rubbish. And the only excuse I can find for your actions is that the fever has affected your ability to read. Pardon. All this, Monsieur, is neither here nor there. Due to a purely personal matter on which your plate on part, I have, I say, lost five of my men. And from now on, I am in command. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. But I will be obeyed. Look here, Dono, I will have... Monsieur may have a dozen objections and all reasonable, but that is not the point. I am to be obeyed to the letter, for I feel that all promises I have made about searching for Mademoiselle Porter can be broken without loss of honor. And I will prosecute a search entirely on my own. Monsieur? Decide at once. I agree without question. I also, Donald. Well, I don't. I don't recognize your right to order me about, and I am not the only one. Oh, now, Clayton, be sensible, be reasonable. Jack, what? what? Disarm, Monsieur Clayton. Miss Andrew, I'll not be disarmed by you. Come here, Monsieur. Yes. It's all right, Monsieur. No one is hurt. Now, Monsieur Clayton, you have your choice. Your word as a gentleman to obey the command and make no attempt at retrieving your rifle, or continue this journey bound. Well, there is no choice. I agree. Hey! Hey, we can't get out! Uh, what do you mean, Phil Anders? We can't get out? We can't get out! And why not, monsieur? The secret exit, the one we saw before, has been blocked up. The big rock has been rolled into the opening. <laughs> So 
overlooking the temple cave, Jane and Tarzan watch the cannibals attack Professor Porter and the party of whites. Jane leans forward eagerly as she sees her father, followed by the others, jump through the waterfall, taking the witch doctor with them. Jane turns to Tarzan. Oh, why didn't Tarzan? I, I don't understand why. What can Cecil have been thinking about? All right. Jane, Bowman Ganny, no catch, Tarzan. But Tarzan, the whole thing is beyond me. One minute the cannibals seem to be friendly toward Daddy and Mr. Philander and the others. I don't know who they are, but they look like sailors. Then Cecil fired at you, and the others seized the rifle, and then the cannibals turned on Daddy and the other white men. Yes, Jane. White men try shoot Tarzan. Other white men save. Black men like kill white men for save Tarzan. I think you're right, Tarzan. And then I heard the man I don't know shout to Daddy and Cecil and Mr. Philander to jump into some cave behind the waterfall. Little more, night come. Jane, Tarzan, go into water. But, but we can't, Tarzan. Not with all these cannibals around. We are safe enough up here in the trees. But the minute one of these blacks sets eyes upon us, they will shoot their arrows at us. Night come, dark. Tarzan go black man Billy. Make fire one hut. All black man see fire. All black man go village. Tarzan and Jane go into water. Find father. Now, now that's a good idea, Tarzan. But do we have to wait till night? Probably there aren't any blacks left at the village. Jane and Tarzan go now? Yes, can't we? We go now. Without further word, Tarzan picks Jane up in his arms, holds her to him, and heads for Monga's village. As they flash at breathtaking speed along the upper jungle terrace, Jane thinks of Clayton's attempt to shoot Tarzan. Was it jealousy? Jane has known that Clayton cared for her. He'd never said anything, but Jane had known. And as they speed through the trees, Jane unconsciously voices her thoughts. Still, that would hardly account for it. Cecil had no way of knowing how much I've grown to care for Tarzan. What, Jane? Oh, oh, oh nothing, Tarzan. I'll have to be more careful about talking to myself. You learn altogether too quickly. Jane, just talk? That's it, Tarzan. Jane, just talk. Even that excuse isn't going to serve at the rate you learn to speak English. The days when I can think aloud are just about over. Look, Jane. Gomangani village. As Tarzan speaks, Jane looks down and sees the cannibal crowd. With never slackening speed, Tarzan presses on. Now he's at the familiar tree overhanging the stockade. Down through the leaves, soundlessly, holding Jane tightly, the ape man drops from limb to limb. They stop. Tarzan points to a black, evidently a sentry, standing by the sacrificial fire. Jane, stop here. Tarzan, go make hut on fire. But Tarzan, what about the black man? Tarzan? Jane, look other way. Tarzan, fix black man. You mean... Kill him? Jane, no look. Tarzan, no kill black man. Other black man kill father. Yes. Yes, Tarzan. I suppose that's right. I won't look. And Tarzan silently, cautiously drops from the limb to the ground. Crouching, his grass rope looped and swinging from his hand, he creeps closer. Closer to the unsuspecting black. <laughs> Temple, Professor Porter, Clayton, Philander, and Arno are standing, staring at the blocked secret passage. Once again, the witch doctor the thing. Yes, I'm sure of it. Look at the devilish grin on his face. Nadare, Sada, Sada, Fire! Frankie, but tell me, Nadare! Well, we, monsieur, I just said that it was bad medicine, and he said that it was good medicine. I don't see that he has any reason to laugh. He didn't expect to come in here with us. He's in as bad a fix as we are. The chances are that he knows another way out. Then if he can get out, so can we. Yes. Uh, but tie this black up again and keep hold of the rope so he cannot get away. We do not want him doing the disappearing trick as he did before. Fire! Fire! Not all, man, yes. You won't, huh? Uh, we shall see. Monsieur, I have no intention of waiting for this inhuman wretch to make up his mind to tell us how to get out. I'm going to make up his mind for him. Come, inside. Come, 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 what are you going to do for him? I haven't made up my mind quite. It just depends on how stubborn he is. I can promise you that I shall not take very long, though. Ava, Jack, Papa. I don't like the tone of Jarno's voice. I, I rather gathered from what he said that, that some sort of torture was in his mind. Personally, 
I don't care much for torture as, as a means of persuasion, but as far as this witch Dr. Baker is concerned, <laughs> I don't care if Donald tricks his ears off. It's rather ghastly, isn't it? I, I mean, after all, we're, we're educated men and supposed to know better. <laughs> Perhaps, Archimedes, but in view of the circumstances, I almost feel that Darno is justified. I do, yes. Trap us in this beastly hole. I don't care if Darno kills him. Oh, well, Darno's coming back. Now, what about uh, none so far? He's quite stubborn. I did not want to harm him permanently, but I am not going to stay in a trap he laid for us without making some effort to find out. Uh, 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 yes, of course, Darno. I must say, though, that I, I don't like the idea of torture, even if he is just a cannibal. If we kill him, it only means a rather nasty finish for us all. We must make him tell us how we can get out of this. What's that? Am I hearing things? Is it my imagination? The fever? Oh, no, Clayton. I heard it. It's real. Real, real. It's not real. It's ghastly. Inhuman. What inhuman cry has reached the ears of Professor Potter's trapped party? Does some hitherto answer?